everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. I'm Matt, and I'm here with my friend Naeem. And how are you today, buddy? I'm great, Matt. Thanks for having me on. I'm happy we uh, get to do this together. Yeah, me too. And you're coming from Puerto Rico today, right? I'm over in Rincon, Puerto Rico. Awesome, man. What brings you there? I just love the warm weather on the beach, man. I always wanted to live on a beach on a tropical island and I said uh, Puerto Rico is still close enough to home where it's not too far away to go see family. So, Yeah, no doubt. It is a beautiful place to live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen you do a lot of uh, a lot of videos when you're walking on streets and beaches and whatnot and stuff. When you're back in the States, you walk along and do your thing with folks, right? So yep. why don't you uh, just get a chance to introduce yourself a little bit to folks here today. Tell them who you are, what you do, and and uh, kind of what you're here for. Absolutely, man. So I am a performance coach, and I, I train uh, business owners and also just people in their personal life as well on how to optimize their, their performance. And it really starts with your mindset, right? Which is why we connected, right? I know you're all about that as well. So I love that we're aligned on that. Uh, but we really help people get the results they want, whether that's in their business, on their sales end or their teamwork or whatever it is, right? Leadership uh, and also on a personal level, right? Everybody has different things they're focused on, whether that's their health, whether that's their relationships, whether that's money. Uh, but I got into it basically so when I left school 12 years ago now, I'm 34, I went to NYU, I studied economics there. And originally I was working on Wall Street. I worked in the hedge fund world. I worked in kind of the big finance world. And this is in 2008 when the market crashed. So I was kind of coming out an interesting. Oh, wow, the, the best time ever, right? Right, exactly. All my economics professors are saying you should look for a job overseas. Um, but uh, I was lucky enough to get a job down on Wall Street but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I got into, I started reading books and tried to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I started reading about personal growth and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I could, it was, to me, it was a foreign concept. Like I could make my life how I want to make it. It's like, what do you want? Like it's a basic question, but to me that wasn't uh, so basic, right? So yeah. I started thinking about that stuff. I hired a coach uh, and then to make a long story short, it's got more and more into it. It changed my life radically. I traveled around the world, which is something I always wanted to do started my own company, which I'm still running now, of course. Uh, and now I'm training coaches as well in, in a company called Performance Coach University, where we certify and train them and help them build their coaching business as well. And that's how we, we got to connect too. So I'm happy we're doing this now because I, I love what you're up to and I love to connect and add more value together and reach more people together. Yeah, no doubt. That was a, a quick snap, so snapshot of, of, of who you've been, where you've been at since school, which is awesome. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we meet through that, uh, through that platform. And um, I've always enjoyed our conversations. And I also enjoy uh, the way in which you were able to communicate to me. I knew there were certain things that you were you were going to say and do, right? How you're going to navigate those waters. And uh, it was always pretty, pretty awesome. One thing I liked about you is that you always have been yourself, you know? Nice. Thank and, you. Uh, even when you had to, um, you know, tighten the reins a little bit or put me up against a wall a little bit a couple of times to say some things to me. <laughs> it was, um, you know, I could tell that it was, it was for real. It wasn't just, you know, just because you're trying to make a sale, right? Yeah. I think that's a big difference. So a lot of times folks wrestle with that in, in world here in business, especially during uh, the time of COVID. And it's been uh, a bit lean for a lot of different people. Some folks it's been fantastic. Some other folks, not so yeah. much. And, Sometimes folks don't know exactly what to say or or how to say it or or how to press in or how to how to let go, right? There's all these issues that happen. And I know that's some of the things that you're really good at and things that you you help teach uh, through your your own business and as well as through the coaching you're providing. So I think it's fun for that matter. So give us a little bit of idea about the performance coaching university first, and then we'll <laughs> lead into a little bit about who you are in your own business as well, because for folks that don't know about that university and who even leads that university, I think yeah. they might be interested to find out what that's all about. Absolutely, man. yeah. And and I appreciate what you said about uh, earlier and uh, just now what you just said about uh, our previous interactions. And part of it is because I knew you could handle it too. Well, coaching is first, first coaching is about being real and direct, right? So it's not always so pleasant to like, if you have a good coach, right? Sometimes they gotta be direct and it doesn't feel good in the moment, but that's how you make change, right? Right. Uh, but it doesn't mean it doesn't also mean you want to be mean to somebody, right? It's really just being a solid leader, right? Leadership is there's a price to leadership, and as you know, right, you lead a team and you're, you're a great coach as well. Um, but I also with you too, I knew you can 
uh, it depends on the person I'm talking to, right? I know some people can kind of take the realness a little more than others. So I appreciate you playing with me and, uh, and, uh, not getting, most people get offended by that kind of stuff. Right. So I knew you could take it though. So, but, uh, in terms of, um, now people think I'm like the biggest jerk in the world, right? When I was talking to you, <laughs> like, what did I say to Matt? <laughs> That's right. No, no, he was, he wasn't bad. It wasn't bad folks. It was just, yeah. it was challenge. It was challenge. Yep. Uh, but basically, so performance coach university is where we, again, we certify and train people to become world-class performance coaches and really impact people's lives, right? Again, this is the just like any industry, right? There's there's like Mike, you can call yourself a basketball player, but then there's like Michael Jordan and there's like everybody else, right? So I'm not saying I'm Michael Jordan. I'm just saying, I don't care. There's so many coaches now. And this is what I like. A lot of people talk, but I don't care what you say. I care like if it's a basketball metaphor, if you get on the court, then your game does the talking. So same with coaching, right? There's so many people saying, I'm this coach, I'm that coach. I could do this, I could do that. But at the end of the day, you got to test out, see who's good, see if it's the right fit. And also ultimately it's about getting results, right? So again, people can talk all day, but ultimately the best coaches that we know of, they're the ones that produce results for people, right? So we really want to make sure the coaches that come through our program, they are equipped with that skill set. And it's not just learning it up here. It's about a lot of it. It's training, right? It's practice and it's consistent training. One of our models is the training never stops. So every day, I don't care how good you are, you got to keep on growing to the next level. The best ones like Kobe and LeBron, they're training harder than everybody, even though they're already at the top of their game, right? So, so we do, so we train coaches, we certify them, we teach them, of course, so we coach them really. And then we also help them for the people that want to build a business and get clients. So that's what it's really about. It's not about making money. That, that's part of it too, of course, but it's about changing lives, right? So it's kind of, if you do the thing, if you kind of set it up properly, you're going to have huge impact and make great money but you're also going to really do what we were meant to do, which is really impact people's lives around the world, especially now with COVID more than ever. It's really important. The suicide rates are up. Depression is up. Like alcohol abuse, drug abuse, domestic abuse, all those things are up because of people being home alone or with their family kind of cramped up. And the biggest fear people have is not public speaking or snakes. It's being alone with their own thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a big difference these days for sure. Yep. And uh, that that organization you're part of, uh, did you did you start there? I never did ask that question. Did you start there as a client, and then and then became a coach, or did you did you start off as a, as you know looking for a job there, got hired on, or how how that work out? Yeah. So what happened with me? So after I left Wall Street, then I traveled and started my my own company, and then I worked for Tony Robbins because I'm like, hey, I love coaching but I also want to learn from the best, right? I remember maybe Richard Branson or somebody said, hey, the best way to get good at something is go work for somebody that's really good and get and get and you get paid to learn, right? So I got paid to learn from the best coach in the world, right? So I did that for four years. And then I knew Tony had a son, Jarek. And I'm like, hey, he might be good. Not always, right? Michael Jordan's kids aren't as good as Michael Jordan in basketball, right? So it doesn't always mean that. But I'm like, hey, let me call this guy. Let me see if he's any good. And I, I saw his website. I'm, like, oh, I'm better than this guy, right? I was, I'm like a... 26 year old kid. Right. And then, he, and, then, and then he calls me. I'm like, I didn't expect him to call me for my coaching call for the intro call. And he called me. I'm like, Oh, is this Jarek? And he's like, yeah. And I, you could just feel the presence of people on the phone. Right. So he was just like, I was like, Oh wow. Like, right away. I'm like, this guy's the real deal. And I could just feel it. Right. So we had a great coaching call. I hired him as a coach and he's still my coach. Uh, so the reason I bring that story up though is that's how I got to PCU because Performance Coach University is Jarek's program. And Jarek helped me radically change my life as a coach. And he's still helping me change my life as I keep on going, uh, which I'm so grateful to him for. Um, so I heard about Performance Coach University through him because it's his program. And once he said that, I'm like, yeah, for sure. I want to do that because I knew all of his stuff was great so far. So I enrolled in that. It helped me grow my business. I actually don't, I never worked for PCU. I'm a, I'm a, I went through the program and now I have a partnership with them, right? So I just have my own company called Mood Ventures. Again, we do business coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching. And then with Performance Coach University, I help them build their business too. And they're technically a, kind of a client, but not my, I get the benefit really, because I get to see how Jarek runs his business and how they grow. And just being attached to a solid organization like that. You can imagine if you're like an athlete being associated with like a Nike, it's kind of cool. You get to like get that lift. So for me personally, I always tell the students too, I'm like, you get to be part of a brand 
and really an environment and a community of people playing the game at a high level. And then you're either going to level up or you're just going to fall off. There's no real in between, right? So for me, that's really the the huge piece behind that. So I'm really honored and grateful to be able to have that partnership with them. Yeah, no doubt. What a, what a great opportunity for you. And then obviously for everybody else that you're able to, to interact with, right? Yeah, absolutely. Then, then you talked about your company, which is, uh, well, web, website right here, which is your name. Yep. So tell us a little bit about your company again. You said a few things, and right here I've got uh, off of your LinkedIn profile. By by the way, folks, you can find them on LinkedIn pretty easily as well. Yep. Uh, but you help businesses, brands, and individuals achieve rapid, measurable improvements in work and life through keynote speaking and business performance coaching. So uh, that's a quick snapshot. I mean, there's a lot more than that to it, but um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I call it the mood mastery method. And one of my big things I learned working with Tony is 80% of success. I think honestly more, but it's really arbitrary, but 80% of success is mindset. 20% is the mechanics. And most people, they start with the mechanics, right? It's like, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to build a business. I want to make more money. They go read a book. They go talk to somebody They're like, oh, here's what you got to do. Here's the workout. Here's the diet plan. And why do they never work most of the time? Or why do they work for a little bit and then they stop and then they fall back, right? So it's not the knowledge. Everybody knows how to get fit and healthy, but more than ever, most Americans are overweight, right? Maybe 60%, 70%. It's crazy, but it's not that hard, right? So it's not knowing what to do. It's doing what you know, right? So what I do, I kind of work with, I work with business owners. Then I work again with people in their personal life. Uh, but basically with business owners, same thing, right? Business owners hire us in when I worked for Tony, same now. They'd be like, hey, I got to get my sales team to perform better. I got to get my team to communicate better. I got to get my people to show up and want to work and get to work on time, right? And again, it's not forcing them. It's not even incentivizing them with money. It's really figuring out what's going on behind their mindset. And everybody's different, of course, right? So it's kind of, for me, I love it because it's kind of like a little puzzle and like a, a formula to figure out and it's different for everybody and there's patterns. And the cool thing is that once you get good at figuring out these patterns, you can help people get the results that they want that for them, it was like, oh my God, it's so hard, right? And it, and it, it kind of is impossible if you don't know what you're doing, but if you know what you're doing, kind of like magic, if you see a magician, you're like, holy crap, that's amazing. But if you really see how they do it, like really, that was so easy, right? <laughs> right. So or same with like coding a computer, right? Coding a computer seems really hard, but it's if you know how to do it, it's like, oh, cool. I got to put this dash here, this semicolon here, and then I got a website. Sorry, right. the, the strategy piece too. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I lost you for just a second. But like we got oh, you back. Okay. So, so what we do is again, I, I go in there and work on the mindset. The strategy comes too. Like, of course, we know sales strategies, marketing strategies, whatever the strategy is, losing weight, making more money. But again, we start with the foundational core of it because most people they they miss that part, right? They go straight for the for for. The, the 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 results they're after, but again, they're not if they don't have the foundation set. That's how most people spin their tires, and they don't really get very far. Totally agree. Totally agree. I've I've had a client like that recently, and wanted to scale the business and do all kinds of great yeah. things, make more money, and do better, and and have things work for him better. But but if you're not willing to look at the foundation of things and and what what does a goal mean to you? What are what how 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 you perceive certain things? How do you plan things out? Right? If you don't know those things, you're never going to be able to do the other stuff. It's just never yeah. going to work, right? So it takes a lot of work, even if you think you already know it. You know, it's just like, well, I don't think so because then you wouldn't be hiring me to scale. You know, yep. so maybe, yeah, that's another story. So <laughs> here's a fun little fun little. Have you ever watched The Office before? Yeah, I love that show, Steve Carell. I don't watch it too much, but my brother's a big fan of it, and I, I I love it. It's really funny. It is a funny show. So here's a here's a big zinger I'll throw at you real quick. So if you were hired to come in and do team management with the folks on the office, what would some of the things be that you would do coming into that scenario? Yeah, that's a great question. So I don't know <laughs> enough about the contact. Well, I do. I know it's like a big jokester, like farm over there like steve carell and the other what's the other guy young guy's name with like the he, he kind of bullies people and picks up in a funny way yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just for his name it's a comedian guy still now today but um yeah i know you're talking about but, it, but he, 
But I think, so I don't know the content of like the, the kind of the, the dynamics of it, but I do get the gist of it. So I'm going to answer the question. So what I would do with them, if, if what's the goal, if it's to improve their performance or what? Yeah, Sorry. team performance. Um, that's a good question because they're such jokesters, right? And they're always humorous. Yes. So the first thing I would do is really figure out, I, I'd, uh, well, one is I'd be funny with them, right? Because it sounds like they're, they're a culture of humor, right? So I'd build rapport and connect with them, right? But I'd be like, hey, I'm like you, right? Like, let's let's have a good time because it seems like that that's like a value for them, right? They really enjoy having a good time together. Um, and then what would I do? Hmm. Man, maybe I would do I would do a, a fun like either maybe like a, a physical challenge, like an obstacle course or a like maybe take them skydiving or something cool to get them out of their comfort zone a little bit and get them out of their normal kind of pattern of like how they operate. Um, and then honestly, I don't know enough about what's going on there, but then I would just really figure out, I dig in with them and ask them the questions that I need to figure out, like, why do they even want me in there? Like, what do they really want? To get yes, done, right? they're in a paper company and oh, they're okay. they're selling they're selling paper like uh -huh. physical paper right so that's their whole thing which is a really kind of funny as well because how many how many companies do you know they're just cold calling right. you want to buy a ream of paper today right so but their whole thing is selling paper and they have to work collectively to do that right they've got clients they've got past clients they need to get new clients and all this kind of stuff but then there's all these dynamics going on in the scenes where you got a couple that's engage having sex inside of the office you've got other people that are looking to to plot against somebody else and one guy who wants to be the manager but he's never going to be the manager right he's always trying to do these things so you've got all these dynamics happening at the same time what we're really trying to do is sell some paper, <laughs> paper. <laughs> so yeah how do you make all that work and when you said skydiving i'm sitting here thinking about i don't know if people watch the show but I'm thinking about some of the characters that are on that show and watching them with you trying to skydive. And that would be a freaking hilarious episode. But um, so, right, so the end result obviously is for them to work together as a team. And there's, a, there are some dynamics there using this as a fun example where you have scenarios that are, that are, that are just um, tough obstacles to overcome with somebody that's involved in a intimate relationship. And you've got other people that are trying to, um, to really work their best to step over other people to get to another position. That's all they really want. Yep. Uh, right. And sometimes people know that's what that person wants. And sometimes they don't know what that person wants. And you've got some other people that are just passive aggressive. So they're just kind of like, whatever, whatever will be, will be. And I'm just here to do my job. Right. right. So to pull that together uh, requires a lot of effort from somebody. So if, uh, if Steve Carell was to say, hey, Naeem, I really need some help over here in my business, right? I got these people everywhere going up. And by the way, Steve Carell's jacked up too, right? He's got all kinds of problems as the leader, and he's calling you trying to get some help because he thinks he's got it all squared away too. And sometimes the guy who's making the phone call needs help more than the rest of the team because that's probably where, where it falls short, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah so that's a, that takes a lot of work. I, I know I can't tell you don't to complete strategy of what you would do with that. It's kind of fun. Fun example. Well, that, well, now that I know they're selling paper, well, one is you're right. The, usually, the chokehold on any business is the business owner, right? Which they usually don't want to admit, right? Because they want to figure that control it and like don't let go and right all that stuff, right? Uh, but in, it's, so now that I know they're selling paper, I would figure out why. I'd, I'd come up with an interesting way of like maybe have like a, a that, that'd be really funny actually, right? Just like have a. I'm sure they've done it on the show maybe as an episode already, right? Like maybe a challenge. A sales challenge on selling paper, right? It'd be kind of funny, and then maybe set up some parameters and obviously make sure everybody get kind of the goals and the results that they're after. And that'd be funny because I run sales teams here for my company and for PCU too. And so it'd be funny to like run a. I never ran. A, I never thought of running a sales team for a paper, uh, for paper, right? So I wouldn't be running the team, but I'd be coaching them on that, right? So it'd be kind of cool to kind of facilitate that and coach them on like what's the like what's the script for selling paper, right? Like what's the What's our, our pitch? What's our, like, how are we going to do it? Are we going to knock door to door? Are we going to put out some funny ads, right? So that'd be kind of interesting and fun to think about more if I was doing that. So with let's, them. Say, let's say Bob is on the team and um, everybody else is doing fairly well, but Bob's having a difficult time um, meeting any goal. And yep. Bob's trying. He's making phone calls. Um, he's knocking on doors. He's trying to call you know, old contacts and, you know, bringing back in some cold, cold stuff. I'm just not able to, to, to 
cross that that threshold? You know, what would be some things that you might do with somebody like that? Yeah. So it's again, it's, I'd figure out what's going on in Bob's head and really kind of figure out. The, we're always telling ourselves stories, right? And it's really beliefs, right? He's got some beliefs that are probably popping up that are holding him back. So I'd I'd really kind of ask him questions, really understand what are and it's, it, they come in the form of stories, right? It's like, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm not a good salesperson, or it's bad to make money, or paper stinks. The why I'm working here, like whatever thoughts he has about all that stuff. And then I'd really start there, just kind of shifting the, the stories and the beliefs he has. Uh, and then I'd also shift like literally his whole physiology and his focus and his language, right? A lot of the things that he's not, we're not always aware of internally and also within our nervous system and kind of like an athlete, right? It's like if LeBron's not shooting his jump shot, you might have like a little, maybe you have to tweak his elbow a little bit or tweak his finger a little bit. So same with that. I'd start like it's one thing at a time and seeing what tweak is going to get the result. So that's the cool part again. I don't know the answer and like neither does obviously Bob, but it's a lot of experimentation, no, noticing what's working and then continuing to kind of either shift it or improve it until you get the result. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And one day he'll be making that three point shot. Yeah. Yep. So I'll, Bob, so I'll Bob, ream a paper to somebody. <laughs> Bob, will, Bob, will, Bob will get the paper contract for the New York times. You know, he'll be like, dude, I just sold a multi-billion dollar contract. That's a lot of paper. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So, how do you uh, how do you reach out to folks? I'm, I know you got a website. We've talked about that. Um, are you uh, and I talked about some of the content. Are you doing content on a daily basis? And you're offering that on uh, on LinkedIn and other places, or uh, how can folks get connected with you? And, and what can they expect to connect connect with? Yeah. So yeah, all over the place. Like you said in the beginning, I'm all over social media and my website, and I have an email list as well. If people opt in for that if if they want but basically they can connect well they can to any of those places right social media my website uh those those are the best ways yeah and then the content is all about what we're talking about right? it's all about mindset performance peak so peak performance too i'm i'm, I'm, I'm an athlete i always love playing sports i played basketball in college so a big part of kind of my ethos and the way i like to train people is uh, kind of like an athlete right every day it's like i have my program for not just for work, but for everything, right? For, for your body, for your relationship, for your money, for your rest, for your fun, right? So it's not just this one kind of compartmentalized thing we're working on. We're working on everything, right? So sleep is just as important as working your butt off. A lot of people say, oh, I don't need to sleep. No, it's like, dude, you got to sleep right. So when you wake up, you could just crush it and just make it a great day, right? So I treat my body and my mind and my clients as well like they're prime athletes because we are and they perform a lot better that way as well. Well, and you know, when we first met, you looked a little different than you do now. And uh -huh. uh, you had actually, I don't know how long we run a couple of years now, or year, yeah. at least a couple of years. And uh, you've lost some weight and you've done some stuff for yourself. I mean, so you practice what you preach. So I mean, what, what point did you think like, oh crap, what's going on with my body and myself? And you know, that, that you started doing that yourself. Yeah. So I got into health. So aside from the mindset, I got into like health and fitness back when I was well teenager, right? Because I was playing basketball, I wanted to get better at sports. I was a little overweight too as a kid. So that was a big drive for me. I never wanted to be overweight. It was always uncomfortable and not like cool. Like I didn't feel good, right? Like physically like to people, I didn't feel confident, but I also didn't feel good in my body, right? It had low energy and stuff. But I got more into it. Like more recently as I get, I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm not really, it's all relative obviously, right? But as I'm getting older, it's less about like lifting tons of weights, which is why I lost some weight. Cause before I wanted to have muscle and I still do, it's fun to have muscle and look good. But now I'm more about like making sure I have the energy throughout my day so I can just perform better at work and perform better for my clients. And for my, if I don't have a girlfriend right now, but when I have a girlfriend or when I'm with friends and family, like, so I can be my best every day. So, um, now it's more just about He's single for those of you that are out there. Uh, Naeem is single. He is available. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Right? Uh, and then, uh, so, so now it's really about, I don't really, now it's like interesting, right? Cause my focus shifted from how can I lift so much weight and look good to, I still, I want that, but now it's, I'm just like, I stretch a lot. I do a lot of foam rolling. I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of paddle boarding and surfing. So more kind of things that are going to nurture my body. So I, I stay like limber and flexible and I don't hurt myself if I fall, right? Because I'm yeah. getting a little more stiff as I get older, you know? 
I know it sounds crazy coming from like a 34 old dude, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a coach. No, right? I'm you're, you're the right mindset, buddy, because I'm, yeah. I'm not 34 at all. I, I was 34 a long time ago. I've been married for 32 years, so that's all you know. Oh. But I will say that um, that it's a, it's so important to do that and to do that now. And so yeah. you're my age, um, then you're much better off by the time you're my age, right? I mean, I've right. always had some major physical battles with cancer and all those kinds of things that happened to my my body. But take cancer out of the out of the picture, I still wish I could do all kinds of things that I probably be better at now if I'd have been doing what you're doing right now. And uh, it takes a little bit of effort. It takes work. And those are some of the things that you, you work with folks on when you're when you're coaching and working with them as well. As far as uh, I mean, you're not like a health coach per se, but you do work with that because you're more a holistic guy. You're you're yep. everybody holistically, right? Yep. So, um, again, just thank you again, Naeem, for being here today and playing around a little bit with some of the stuff on the office. So I guess you're going to be the next coach for the office, and that's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens with them. Well. We might see that in another future episode. Who knows, right? They'll be skydiving with Naima. <laughs> you guys see Steve Carell. He's going to be a totally different dude, you know? Totally, man. He's going to be the best <laughs> ever. Best ever. Crazy stuff. All right. So, again, folks, you can meet, you can find him at naimamud.com. Uh, That's his website. And then, of course, uh, for those of you that are watching here on LinkedIn, uh, you can just put his name in the, in the search box at the top, and you'll find him right there. And uh, you'll have all kinds of content available for, for, for folks there on LinkedIn as well. And I assume you have a, a, a Facebook group or a page of some sorts. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. I got my Facebook page. I also have a Facebook group. If people want to check that out, you guys could just DM me about it. I keep it a, a private group just for I want to make sure it's the right uh, people in there. Not that anybody would be the wrong person, but it's for a specific person yeah. with they're going hey by the way i'm selling car insurance if you want some car insurance yeah c call me thanks name appreciate it <laughs> yeah exactly. not exactly what you want right no no totally understand that but, so. but I, I love the uh i love the work that you're doing man and, I, and uh, one of the things that we look for it's like it's the heart man and you you really do i can i know now we've been friends for two years now right so i know you're doing it for the real re the right reasons and you yeah, you put your heart into it i know the challenge you've been through and I know uh, I love that you're taking care of your health so well, too. So uh, I, I'm honored that you had me on the show and I'm grateful yeah. that we got to add some value to people. Yeah, no doubt. So, again, folks, uh, if you'd like to connect with Naeem, he's a fantastic guy. He's got a couple of different ways that he can help you through his own business. Of course, uh, you can find him at his website and then through Performance Coaching University. Uh, and he's with uh, Jarek Robbins over there. That's Tony Robbins' son. And uh, they have a fantastic program. That's originally how I found Naeem in the first place. I was really interested and intrigued by what they offer and what they do. Um, so a couple of great resources for you if you're wrestling with some things in your life right now or in your business. Um, obviously, during these tough times of COVID, uh, there are a lot of things that we have that we wrestle with internally in our businesses. And uh, to know a guy who was uh, who was going through the Wall Street era time and and starting out in 2008, the worst possible time you could do anything like that, yeah. he was able to uh, to work on his life and to be able to find exactly what he needed to do and overcome that obstacle. I mean, good grief! Isn't that somebody you want to talk to in your life, right? Somebody you can get help from. So, Nayan, thanks so much for being here today on Matt Chat Live and uh, giving us a chance to meet you a little bit and understand how you're having some fun out there in Puerto Rico doing your your paddle boarding and your surfing out there. Yep. <laughs> you might be able to even catch a wave today. It looked really pretty outside today there. Yeah, it was beautiful today. I'm going to get out there later too. I went out this morning. I'm going to go out usually at sunset as well. Oh, man, I would be doing the same thing, bro. That would be so yep. freaking awesome. That's part, right, of, that's part of being a peak performer for me, right? To, things like that, but yeah. Yes, and you're really enjoying things in life like you wanted to, and that's really, yep. really the key thing. And to see that, one, you're still working. But two, you get to enjoy the work you're doing and live the life you want to in the meantime. So yep. it could get better than that. Absolutely, man. All right. Well, thanks, Dave, for being here. Another episode of Matt Chat Live. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate it. I had a great time with you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm.